In combat all over the world, the Browning automatic rifle is proving its worth. It's good. Infantry units use it to increase their firepower. But you can't describe a rifle merely by saying it's good. You have to get down to facts, technical facts. So here goes. The Browning automatic rifle, caliber 30, model 1918A2, is an air-cooled, gas-operated weapon. It uses a 20-round magazine, and you can fire at a slow, automatic rate. Or, if you flick this change lever, you can fire at the full automatic rate. So much for the description. What we want to find out now is the principle of operation. To help us see how this weapon works, we'll use this cutaway model. Flick the change lever off safe. And we'll start the firing cycle with the cartridge igniting. As that happens, gases travel along the barrel and into the gas cylinder. Now let's use the animated drawing and follow the course of the expanding gases through those label parts. When the gas reaches the well, it hits the gas piston plug and drives the piston to the rear. At the same time, the bullet leaves the muzzle. The gas now escapes through the gas cylinder body opening, the end of the barrel, and through six escape holes. There are three on the left side and three on the right. Remember, the piston is moving to the rear. It is attached to the slide. This action compresses the recoil spring. As the slide goes back, it carries the hammer back from the firing pin lug, and the hammer pin lines up with the bolt link pin. Now let's go to the other side. At this point, the bolt is still locked. Now unlocking begins. The bolt link revolves forward about the hammer pin and the bolt lock is drawn out of the locking recess. Look closely and note how the lock is braced by the bolt link and the rear of the bolt support. Initial slow extraction starts as the lock cams out of its recess. Then the case is further loosened when the lock cams against the bolt support. At the same time, the firing pin is drawn from the face of the bolt by the camming action of this surface in the bolt lock against a similar cam surface on the firing pin lug. Now in animation from the other side. Since the bolt hides most of this action, let's remove it and watch the camming action again. Now extraction and ejection takes place. The cartridge case is pulled out and drawn to the rear, held by the extractor. Then the cartridge strikes the ejector, pivots about the extractor, and is thrown out of the receiver. The slide strikes the sear release, 
and finally the buffer, which absorbs the remaining recoil. Watch it in animation. Here's how the buffer works. The buffer head is struck by the slide and forces the friction cups over the friction cones, compressing the buffer spring. In the forward movement, the action of the bolt link, hammer, and bolt lock is the reverse of the rearward movement. As the slide moves forward, the joint at the bolt link is prevented from buckling downward by the tail of the feed rib, by the locking surface of the bolt lock, and by the bolt guide and bolt support. When the slide is moved about a quarter of an inch, the front end of the feed rib strikes the cartridge and it starts out of the magazine. The cartridge strikes the bullet ramp and is deflected up toward the chamber. Then it's forced out of the magazine by the bolt. The bullet slides up the face of the bolt and under the extractor. Then the bolt is locked as it continues forward. Now let's see that in detail. The bolt lock rides over the rear shoulders of the bolt supports and the rear end of the bolt lock is cammed upward. Now the bolt link revolves backward around the hammer pin. Remember how the firing pin is enclosed in this slot in the underside of the bolt lock. As the bolt lock is cammed up, the firing pin is freed by the bolt lock. The slide and hammer move on, carrying the hammer pin past the bolt link pin. The center rib of the hammer strikes the firing pin, driving it forward, igniting the round. This cycle will be repeated, and the rifle will continue to fire as long as the trigger is held back. Before seeing the trigger action in the two rates of fire, let's look at the change lever in its three positions. Safe, full automatic, and slow rate of fire. In the S, or safe position, the heel of the trigger is blocked by the solid body of the change lever. In the A, or full automatic position, the heel of the trigger rises into the slot in the change lever and the toe of the connector is blocked by a projecting lip. In the F, or slow rate of fire position, the body of the change lever is cut away and allows the trigger and connector to rise to their highest points. Now let's see the difference in action between the full and slow rate of fire. At the full rate, the change lever spring holds the lever in this position. This part, the connector, is held against the sear and keeps the sear nose depressed. So the rifle will keep firing until the magazine is empty or the trigger is released. Watch this action as it continues. And note that the sear release is stopped from hitting the sear by the stop lever.
That's what happens when the change lever is set at full rate. When it's turned to F, or the slow rate, however, the toe of the connector has more of the slot in the change lever to work in. Watch how the connector is cammed forward, contacting the cammed surface of the sear carrier when the trigger is pulled. With the sear disengaged, the connector raises the forward end of the stop lever and holds it there. Since the sear head is disengaged, the sear nose can now rise, forced up by the sear spring, and engage in the sear notch on the bottom of the slide as it starts forward. Wait. At this point, we'll add the actuator. Now when the slide hits the sear release, it forces the actuator to the rear, compressing the actuator spring. Then the slide moves forward and engages the sear nose. Let's get a closer look at the sear cam and the sear release. The actuator now comes forward, forcing the sear release out of the buffer head. The stop lever being depressed, the sear release contacts the camming surface on the sear and releases the slide. With the trigger mechanism removed, we can see what happens now as we release the trigger. The stop lever spring returns the stop lever to normal position. The center leaf of the sear spring provides tension for the trigger and connector, while the two outside leaves give tension to the sear. Now back to the animation. The counter recoil spring absorbs the shock when the slide engages the sear. All right, let's watch the trigger action once more. First, at full rate. Then, slow rate. There you have it. Know the firing cycle thoroughly. It will help you locate malfunctions and keep the gun in fighting shape.